So, um, yeah, I would say the last two years of my life have been very challenging. I've really been working hard at, you know, keeping my sense of humor. Because on top of everything, I've gained weight. Well, I've had two children. <laughs> no, actually, it is a little bit their fault. Actually, a lot their fault. I actually totally blame them. Because um, for the first time in years, there are treats in the home. No, guys, I don't know if anyone else has this like main, main, main weight maintenance strategy, but that's, that's what I do. My whole adult life, that's how I've kept it together. You don't bring treats into the home, right? You can't have treats in the home. I'm going to eat the treats if they're in the home. So you can't bring the treats into the home. Well, the treats are in the home. Right? Like we have this cupboard. I oh, know, do you guys have the cupboard? It's like, whoa! And there's like granola bars and crackers and cookies, sometimes there's even chips. <laughs> I haven't seen this stuff with barcodes in years. It's amazing. So it's kind of been a bit of novelty, I'll be honest. Like the last like couple of years, I've just been in very close proximity to the treats. So I've been like, ah! Yeah, I've been like basically carb loading without the marathon at the end. <laughs> well, a bunch of my friends are like gluten free. I'm gluten focused. <laughs> I really just try to concentrate on getting my weed in every day. Yeah, yeah. And I have rediscovered, I have reclaimed my love of craft dinner. <laughs> oh my God! I totally forgot! That stuff is awesome! Oh, I cannot get enough! It is it's probably the most brilliant thing ever. And I've been to Italy. Yeah. <laughs> Take it or leave it. Um, no, honestly, like, it's amazing. So when we make a pot of craft dinner for the kids at home, I do that other prayer. Do you ever do this prayer? You pray to God they don't want seconds. <laughs> right, like do you ever do that when you make the chicken fingers or the fries and you're like, um, you guys are full, huh? You don't want any more, right? You, you look very full. <laughs> yeah, honestly, or like when I'm scraping the craft dinner, you know, out of their bowl, I also pray to God that everybody looks in a different direction at once, and then I'm like, <laughs> like, of course you gain weight when you have children. You have two dinners, one at the kitchen table, and one hovering over the trash can. Yeah, so I'm trying to like get into better shape. Like, I know I'm not fat, but I'm not skinny either. I'm kind of that act, the, the awkward middle stage where like, you know, I get a double chin when I'm texting someone, you know? <laughs> Still got a little work to do. Yeah, so I'm just kind of like really been focusing on getting in shape. Yeah, like, you know, stronger and leaner and I will not give up until I'm the media's version of plus size. <laughs> You know, guys, like I've been like really trying to move my body every day. So like every morning I do five sit-ups. I know it doesn't sound like much, but there's only so many times you can hit the snooze button. But that is total core, ladies. That is total core. That right there, diamond core. Fully, fully engaged. Yeah, try it. No, but I've been also doing some other stuff, you know, beyond that. I've been really trying to, uh, you know, just move my body every day. And so I have learned that if you do exercise regularly, the most important thing to do is to keep it to yourself. <laughs> Let's admit it. Unless you, you know, fell off the treadmill and smacked your face or farted in yoga class. <laughs> nobody wants to hear about your workout. Right, nobody wants to see that you checked into the gym. Nobody wants to see the selfie at the gym. Nobody is sitting there, you know, with their news feed going by, going, wow, she's really got it together. Oh, man, I just want to be more like her. Oh, yeah, she's the best. No, they're not doing that at all. Do you know what they're doing? Yeah, they're clicking unfriend. Because they don't need to be seeing that business as they're drinking their cocktail and eating their Pringles. And I've also, um, I've been trying to like eat better, right? I've been trying to like, you know, move away from the cupboard. And so I've been really focusing on eating whole foods, which I recently discovered doesn't mean a whole pizza. 
damn, I thought I was really getting a handle on that eating well stuff, but that's not, no, no that's not it. Yeah, so I, yeah, no, I have been trying to eat, like, really, really good. You know, a lot of fruits and vegetables and all that stuff. And, you know, guys, I find that uh, dieting is like riding a bike. Yeah, a bike that's very hot and on fire. And the ground's on fire and everything's on fire because I'm in hell. <laughs> now, I know they say that nothing tastes as good as skinny feels, which I agree with, except for wine. Wine tastes like skinny can go screw itself. <laughs> Am I right, ladies? Yes, I am. Okay, so I've been like really reading a lot about eating well, and I've discovered this one author. Her name's Janine Roth, and she applies the practice of mindfulness to eating well. You know, paying full attention to not only what we eat, but also where we eat and when we eat. And of course, the big one, why? Why we eat. So it turns out that most times when we're eating, it's an emotional response. We're not dealing with any kind of physical hunger. Right? Like, all right, for, uh, let's just take a quick survey here. Um, uh, who here, when you get really stressed out and you start taking things too seriously, how many of you seek comfort in food? Raise your hand if you, you eat when you're stressed. Uh, thank you so much for your vulnerability and your generosity of spirit. I really appreciate that. Now, you'll notice that not everybody put up their hand when I asked that question. And you know who the other people are, right? They're the drinkers. 